आइडिया जो है उनको कहो कि वो बंद कर दो उनके बीच में आवाज आएगी आप डिस्टर्ब होंगे तो मेरे स्टार्ट करते हैं बिस्मिल्लाहिर reproductive technologies for conservation of wildlife species and it is presented by by doctors bishra alaraka assistant professor department of zoology wildlife and fisheries i hope this scientific talk will provide an opportunity to get in depth knowledge on the topic after the presentation there will be question answer session uh, please over to dr bishra alaraka एप्लीकेशन ऑफ रिप्रोडक्टिव बायो टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर द कंजर्वेशन ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस अबाउट रिप्रोडक्टिव बायो टेक्नोलॉजी reproductive biotechnologies are used to obtain offspring from animals as an alternative to natural mating so in recent times reproductive bio biotechnologies they have emerged and started to replace the uh, conventional techniques so for, uh, first of all question arises that why we use the uh, reproductive uh, uh, biotechnologies uh because uh, uh, because of the uh, there is major concern for future well being of the global environment has grown and uh, many species uh, they are uh, forced into uh, extinction by unnatural causes uh, uh, rather than through slower evolutionary process and the major factors that are contributing uh, this uh, extinction these include uh, large scale farming because uh, Uh, to um, accomplish the dietary needs of uh, of this uh, increasing world population we need to have uh, of course we need to have a large scale farming and then uh, uh, one of the report says that uh, up to up till 2050 uh, there will be uh, there will be uh, no fish in the uh, in our waters so overfishing uh, is also one of the major uh, source of declining the uh, fish population then of course uh, mining because uh, uh, to search for uh, precious metals as well as uh, uh, to um, uh, because of this uh, these housing societies and uh, because they need to uh, 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 they uh, they uh, they use these mining techniques and of course they are uh, face uh, of course they are affecting the wildlife population then forestry because uh, due to increase in human population we need to have uh, more places for uh, housing society so that's why uh, people uh, cut the forest and then uh, uh, of course when the forests are not available so they are directly um, acting as an habitat for the wildlife species Uh, so it means that uh, if we do not have an forest then we of course we do not have an uh biodiversity because uh, uh, one uh, in uh, in wildlife uh, uh, ecology we use the term as a keystone species uh, like here we can take an example uh, that uh, uh, if we want to protect the uh, leopard uh, so first of all we have to protect its uh, prey because uh, um, i can uh, give you a very simple example like in margla hill national park Uh, we have an uh, common leopard here and if we want to protect it this species we we, we must have to protect its prey and uh, one of the favorite prey of common leopard is monkey so it means that if we want to uh, save the leopard we need to have uh, 
to save the monkeys and monkeys they live on for, uh, trees uh, their food their roosting and everything is associated with the trees so it means that if uh, key, uh, keystone species they also play a very important role for the conservation of uh, many species so um, conservation of one species can play a very important role for the conservation of many species. So uh, because, uh, because of declining and because of mining, because of the number of uh, trees, they are declining. And so the, uh, these are the major issues. Because uh, when we say that um, uh, these, uh, so, so uh, 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 because uh, uh, you have uh, listened many stories about that common leopard comes to the villages and uh, and they harm their, uh, of course, their livestock. Uh, the major reason for that, uh, if their prey uh, is not uh, in a uh, uh, in a place, so that's why they come to the cities and then, of course, uh, in retaliation, people kill the wildlife species and uh, these are uh, they, they there may be the one of the cause of the extinction of the major species and also. Uh, there are many uh, other uh, like industrialization road bills and uh, urbanization so these the, uh, these all uh, these uh, these are only few uh, uh, activities but there are lot of various other activities they are affecting the um, uh, major uh, major climatic changes and uh, through increased emission of greenhouse gases and they are of course they are very difficult to reverse and uh, we we see the Kyoto Protocol that, uh, um, and we are also member of many uh, biodiversity uh, uh, signat signatories as well as uh, we know that uh, these climatic changes they are not only uh, like in uh, one uh, only single degree rise in temperature uh, can can we have an uh, floods in one area and uh, we can have an drought conditions in some other area. And uh, on the other way around, we can say that if, if the earth temperature uh, rises by uh, uh, only one degree, so there is an increased number of glacier, melting of the glaciers, and um, this increased uh, melting of glaciers will result into the, um, of course, in flooding. And um, that's the same situation we are facing in Pakistan right now because uh, there is increased flooding and uh, and when we need uh, we, we need the rain there there are drought conditions and uh, these climatic changes they're not only affecting the cro uh, cropping system of our pakistan as we all know that uh, pakistan is an agriculture country and uh, our economy is depends on the um, agriculture but but due to these climatic changes uh, cl uh, cropping system is not only affected when, so when uh, we have an uh, badly affected cropping system so it means that uh, we will face in near future we will face the problem of a uh, uh, food security one of the most important uh, because uh, when we don't have an uh, place for cropping because uh, all area uh, they are filled with the flooded water so it means uh, that uh, we don't have an sufficient wheat and even uh, like uh, uh, in yesterday i was listening about the news um, that uh, they may have a uh, shortage in the near future about the not only uh, the wheat not only other uh, other food food items and we need to export many of the utilities so it means that when when we have to export the utilities they will have an ultimately uh, they will affect the livelihood of the people so all these um, uh, um, climate uh, climate uh, climatic changes not only affect the um, livelihood of the people but also the biodiversity and overall ecosystem uh, is very affected and uh, other problems we can see here that uh, fragmentation of habitats is also uh, caused by like um, in a developing country like Pakistan, uh, we uh, we need to have a road so that we can link with the world like one of the um, major that CPAC roads, motorways and many other roads and other barriers they are um, um, uh, being uh, constructed and of course uh, when uh, when an habitat is fragmented by these barriers so animals they cannot uh, move from one place to the other place and um, uh, in other way around you can say that they are uh, affecting the wildlife species and of course then uh, the new developments in the agriculture initiatives uh, 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 although i'm not against the uh, use of latest technologies because they are necessary 
uh, for the survival of the human beings but but these technologies they have a negative impact on the uh, on our biodiversity because uh, uh, when we when we focus on one item uh, they may have an deleterious effects on the other um, uh, species as well so uh, it means that uh, when uh, when the fragments uh, when the habitats are fragmented uh, so it means that uh, the animals and the um, uh, animals they may, may do not move or migrate from one place to the other place and of course uh, they this will limit the uh, animal ranges and they they, they do not find their uh, um, appropriate uh, mate and of course uh, then uh, when when animals are restricted to one place so it means that they face they may face the problem of inbreeding and inbreeding not only um, uh, is common among many wildlife species because uh, because they are restricted not only due to these uh, road barriers but they are also due to uh, due to climatic barriers as well because uh, if you see that uh, many parts of the pakistan they are affected by the floods so it means when there when there is a water uh, in the surrounding water, so most, many of the animals they cannot travel through, or they cannot migrate through these uh, these areas, these flood affected areas. So they they may face the problem. Not only the terrestrial animal, but also the aquatic animals they may face uh, the similar problem. And of course, it ultimately leads to the loss of genetic diversity within the population. And uh, inbreeding uh, may have an increased risk of genetically inherited diseases, congenital defects, and susceptibility to infection and one of the major reason uh, is the environmental pollution that is interfering with the ability to reproduce uh, successfully and environmental contaminants and byproducts of the because uh, in pakistan uh, i'm uh, i'm uh, again giving an example like um, when we have an industries uh, in surrounding of the cities so um, these industries, they have their, uh, not only they have a chemical waste, but they also, uh, they have a um, uh, waste like in the form of fumes. Uh, they are, uh, they not only uh, affect the uh, humans, uh, human uh, survival, but also they have, an, when their waste uh, is moving into the crops, uh, so they, uh, these uh, the crops may become toxic, and even uh, our daily vegetables they are affected by these um, uh, environmental uh, contaminants. And of course, man-made chemicals in the environment they have weak estrogenic and anti-androgenic activities, and of course they have an deleterious effects on animals. And uh, chemicals they are they not only affect the human spermatogenesis, but increase in the studies, they uh, they have an uh, environmental contamination, uh, they, uh, they have a very uh, negative impacts on the wildlife populations. And when, uh, when we see that uh, these uh, contaminants, when they, um, uh, uh, they see, uh, uh, they seepage, uh, seepage into the uh, rivers, then in, uh, first of all in streams, then rivers, and in, of course, into the oceans, so ultimately, they are not only affecting the terrestrial species, but also they are affecting the aquatic species and aquatic species because uh, crustacea to fish, waterfowl, and many marine mammals. And, uh, uh, and one of the major uh, important is that uh, these climatic uh, changes, they not only affect the uh, uh, local migration of the animals, as you all know that uh, most of the animals, they uh, they, uh, they migrate or they even uh, move from their roosting places to their feeding uh, places and of course they all uh, they also uh, in, like in case of winter season uh, they uh, they migrate from siberia or even from north pole to the uh, south pole and uh, and these uh, not only that these local or seasonal or these international migrations, they're not only affected by the climatic changes, but also they have an, uh, because uh, when animals, they do not migrate uh, from uh, uh, from one area to the other area. So it means that we, we need to have an, uh, these uh, bird migrations, they have a very good impact on our climates also, be, uh, on our cropping system also, because uh, you know that when, when uh, because birds are, uh, most of the birds, they are insectivorous. So, um, uh, and insects, they are the major part of their diet. So if the birds, 
birds they cannot come to the uh, to the areas uh, where we have an crop so we need to we, we use uh, the farmers they need to have an uh, use more insecticide more pesticides and uh, of course the, these insecticides and pesticides uh, they will residue into the crops and ultimately they will affect the human beings so it means that we uh, uh, all of these factors and not only the climatic changes habitat fragmentation uh, diseases inbreeding and many other areas they are uh, they have an uh, affecting the um, biodiversity so uh, our uh, animal conservation or aim is to understand or sustain the biodiversity as uh, as only single species can compromise the functioning of the entire ecosystem uh, of course when we when we, when we talk about the ecosystem it means that uh, uh, that many of the um, uh, ecosystem means that uh, um, all of the species they interact with each other and uh, their interaction may result for uh, uh, this interact um, uh, some are acting as an predator some are acting as an prey some are acting as an producers and others are active uh, acting as an consumers so it means that uh, the interaction of all these uh, producers consumers predator prey they are this is very necessary for not only the survival of the wildlife species but also the survival of human beings even depends on these uh, uh, animals so uh, here you can see that i have given a few figures but um, this is a, a little old figure but uh, i think uh, in a latest literature you can see that uh, that uh, many species they are facing the threats of extinction because they are uh, being like 25 percent of the mammals 12 percent of the birds 20% of reptile, 30% of amphibian, 20% of fishes, invertebrates, and 55% of plant species, they are uh, facing the um, declining. So it means that we need to uh, protect not only one species, but there are so many other species, uh, they are facing the threats of extinction due to these uh, global environmental changes, due to um, uh, many other uh, uh, problems, they are affecting these, these species. So reproductive biology, uh, has a major uh, aim in the conservation of the genetic diversity. So it provides insight into male uh, reproductive specialities and adaptation of different species and is crucial uh, for understanding the novel factors that are that deleteriously affect the survival of the population and uh, we uh, because uh, uh, so it means that we need to conserve the species so conservation can be done through um, we all know that uh, conservation can be done through ex situ as well as through the in situ uh, uh, factors and uh, because i have given you many examples that uh, uh, if we want to protect the species, first of all, we need to uh, conserve its environment. But it takes time because it's not a day's game. It uh, it takes many years and years uh, that when that habitat may be uh, may be protected and uh, it may play a role in the conservation of the species. So it means that uh, we 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 must have to uh, use these alternative technologies for uh, the conservation of the species. And these uh, alternative technologies uh, can be artificial insemination, uh, in vitro fertilization, intracytoplasmic sperm injection, zygote intrafallopian transfer, gamete intra, uh, intrafallopian transfer, embryo cryopreservation, embryo transfer, somatic cell uh, nuclear transfer, uh, stem cell technology, and uh, nanotechnology. These are various uh, technologies that can be used for the conservation of the species. So artificial insemination means that First of all, we need to collect the semen from the male and then introduction of this semen into the vagina or cervix of the female by other method other than the sexual intercourse. And this procedure is widely being used in uh, in uh, livestock, but but uh, 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 in wildlife species, uh, uh, like in Pakistan, uh, here we, uh, in our lab, uh, we are working on the artificial insemination in wildlife species, but uh, but only uh, i think uh, only one or two places here we can have a, have a, this technique but the other they are not working on that so the chief advantage of this because uh, uh, artificial ad, uh, ad, insemination because uh, uh, we can uh, have a male of uh, uh, 
required properties and uh, of course uh, uh, there is a problem that when uh, when male and female mate each other, they may uh, have a sexually transmitted diseases. So uh, through artificial insemination, we can avoid these sexually transmitted diseases, as well as in case of wildlife species, because uh, if an animal die in, uh, uh, in nature, so we can collect the uh, semen in, from dead animals. And uh, we can, uh, these, uh, this sperm even uh, can survive in the, uh, epididymis of these dead animal uh, up to few hours even uh, and uh, it has been reported that uh, in some cases uh, that uh, semen can be uh, even uh, 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 collected uh, uh, after 48 hours of the death of the animal so there are very various successful um, applications like uh, here you can see that jn panda and panda population uh, using AI as a really uh, powerful tool and they uh, uh, 20 to 20, 50 percent success have been obtained from uh, this artificial insemination and then coming to the in vitro fertilization it, it means that uh, uh, both male and female they are unable to copulate naturally so in that case uh, we need to collect the oocyte from the female and we need to collect the sperm from the male and of course uh, uh, culture them in the laboratory and uh, this technique is being used uh, <coughs> sorry is being successfully used for endangered animal as well as many steroid animals or animals with having uh, lip, low reproductive um, uh, ability so these can be uh, this can be utilized then coming to the interest uh, cytoplasmic sperm injection that uh, this this is the micro uh, manipulation technique for treating the male infertility so it involves the mechanical insertion of sperm uh, into the cytoplasm of an oocyte to pr produce the desirable embryo and uh, um, uh, of course uh, first of all uh, it happens that uh, uh, the, the success rate uh, success rate of this technique is 80% in livestock like in cattle and um, up to 63% uh, in uh, small ruminants and here you can see that uh, because uh, most of the time the the sperm they uh, they have uh, not sufficient they they do not have uh, sufficient proteins to uh, inject uh, dna into the uh, cytoplasm so um, we can uh, simply that uh, inject the sperm into the uh, cytoplasm of the oocyte and then fertilization can be successful then gamete intrafallopian transfer this uh, this technique uses the multiple eggs they are collected from the ovaries uh, first of all, in this technique, uh, uh, we use the technique of super ovulation. Super ovulation means that uh, we, uh, af after giving the injections of uh, follicle stimulating hormone, uh, we uh, multiple uh, follicles they become mature, and we can collect these uh, follicles and these uh, 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 then eggs they are placed into the flexible tube along with sperm and after that when fertilization takes place so these gametes they are directly injected into the fallopian tubes rather than because uh, um, uh, implantation of the uh, um, gametes that takes place into the fallopian tubes so it means that fertilization can have a, um, uh, can have a more uh, success uh, due to this technique and normally 50% to 70% of the inseminated oocyte they become uh, fertilized and this technique is uh, uh, in, uh, done in equi uh, equine species and then zygote intrafallopian this is also similar to the techniques of uh, uh, gift but uh, it uses the process of in vitro fertilization where eggs are stimulated and collected through IVF method then they are mixed in the uh, with the sperm in the lab and the, then the zygotes, they are uh, returned to the fallopian tubes through laparoscopy procedure. Then uh, this is one of the very important procedure that is called as uh, embryo cryopreservation and freezing of embryos at extremely low temperature like in liquid nitrogen or even in minus 80 uh, in, uh, in a freezer or mouse embryo was the first to be cryopreserved. And freezing machines in control with the controlled cooling rates and um, various cryoprotectants can be utilized and pregnancy can be achieved through this technique. And one of the most important that uh, the vitrification, uh, vitrification means that uh, 
introducing the replaced conventional cryo preservation protocol at it involves highly uh, concentrated aqueous solution of cryoprotectant agent like glycerol and ethyl ethylene glycol and many other glycerol Glycerol uh, has a uh, uh, cryoprotective abilities because uh, uh, it is a permeating uh, cryoprotectant and uh, the purpose of this uh, using this cryoprotectant because uh, we need to cryoprotect the sperm uh, in its uh, in a state where it is uh, um, uh, it, it is present and there are many other non permeating uh, cryoprotectants they make layer around the uh, these uh, sperm and these include sucrose glucose and fructose uh, during no freezing equipment and uh, they are considered uh, superior as compared to slow freezing and the advantages uh, are they are reduced risk and expense in the transportation of expensive animal because uh, i told you many times that uh, these techniques are successfully being used for the uh, for livestock but for uh, live, wildlife species uh, uh, every year um, uh, if you guys have an uh, uh, knowledge about that uh, that many uh, zoo animals they are transferred from one zoo to the other zoo because uh, uh, to avoid the risk of inbreeding uh, so they need to uh, transfer animal from one uh, uh, facility to the other facility so it means uh, uh, transportation of animal not only uh, needs the human resource it also uh, require uh, logistics it requires money and then um, during transfer many animals they uh, they get many diseases of course and uh, uh, they get ill or even uh, casualties can occur uh, so to avoid this we we can uh, collect the semen from from these animals and of course um, uh, we can uh, uh, cryopreserve this semen uh, either through uh, in a liquid nitrogen or either in a minus 80 or even we can store in a refrigerator. Uh, so it means they reduce the risk of expenses and even uh, transmission of diseases or conservation of endangered species germ plants can, can take place. So embryo transfer, this is one of the most important technique and uh, uh, later in 2000. Um, uh, nine, we have done this embryo technique uh, uh, in uh, Punjab Udiyal. Uh, so we collect, first of all, we collected the uh, same uh, as I told you in my previous uh, uh, slides that we can collect the semen from the male and then we collect the oocyte from the female and then we uh, culture both uh, semen and uh, oocytes together and then we can transfer uh, these uh, zygotes to the uh, of course, to the uh, female. And uh, I, as I told you that in 2009, uh, back in 2009, we used this technique uh, because uh, we use the uh, related species uh, uh, rather than the same species. Uh, we have imp implanted the embryo of uh, um, Punjab Udiyal into the uh, uh, local sheep and we obtained three months pregnancy but after that it was not successful but there are chances that we can have this technique and uh, of course um, uh, this technique uh, uh, has been successfully re reported in many uh, domestic species and uh, live calves have been obtained in the river or swamp bump flows in various countries including India also. Uh, then coming to this uh, another technique that is the somatic cell nuclear transfer and this technique also called as cloning and this involves the utilization of micro manipulation technique and cell fusion to transfer blastomeres of multicellular embryo or somatic cell into the nucleated uh, oocytes and here you can uh, use the nucleus of the blastomere and even um, uh, this technique is useful for multiplication of elite animal with minimal genetic variation that if we want that uh, we, we have an uh, um, superior males, uh, this term is uh, specifically uh, used for the livestock because um, they have selected animals uh, on uh, um, uh, uh, after, uh, after research of many, 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 many years they selected uh, or the sperm on the basis that they have an uh, increased milk yield, they have an uh, increased somatic growth, they have a good size, uh, they, they uh, all of all other that they look good and there are many other properties. Uh, so it means that they, they called as an superior animals. So the superior animal germplasm can be 
cloned or um, women have many copies of the same animal uh, rather than to keep uh, one animal or you know, to go for further uh, animal. So animal cloning can be used for the propagation of the variable genotypes and they include genetic modification that we, we can do the genetic modifications. Uh, we want to have an... Um, various animals according to our own desire like we need to have an uh, increased milk yield uh, somatic growth and early growth even and uh, the cloning has been done in various animals like cattle and pig goat, uh, goat and horse buffalo and camel and many this is the dolly here you can see that that this was the first animal that was cloned and stem cell technology this is the new technology that uh, uh, that that posing a great challenge to the uh, uh developing world or even in the developed world so stem cells they compromise those cells which have a capacity to become progenitor and these uh, stem cells uh, or undifferentiated cells they have an ability to become specialized under favorable or induced conditions and the stem cells they can be found in the bone marrow of course and they are neural or even in the, you know, they can be found in the um, amniotic fluid, umbilical cord, or even in the blood of, uh, of the fetus. Uh, these cells are safe and reliable and they can be extensively used for biomedical applications. Then coming to the nanotechnology. So recent advancement in understanding of cellular, molecular and reproductive biotechnology. So this allow the researcher to use uh, cell fluids in minute quantities and they are useful in genetics and farm animal reproduction. So in reproduction microfluids, as I told you in a previous slide that uh, uh, these uh, uh, stem cells, they can be obtained from the, um, uh, from the amniotic fluids and uh, from there you can use these technologies. And uh, of course, uh, these microfluids, they are very helpful in isolation of motile sperm livestock. And uh, these, uh, 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 the, uh, these, these previous slides were about uh, these ap application of these technologies into the development and, and application of AI in the domestic poultry is uh, industry for more than half century. So AI is specifically used uh, for various species like raptors, cranes, waterfowl, uh, parrots, and many pestering species. And of course, uh, in our laboratory, uh, we have used uh, many technologies for the conservation of many uh, threatened species like Indian red jungle fowl, like ringneck pheasant, uh, like uh, a black astral loop uh, that is also a um, uh, backyard that can also be called as backyard poultry. And then uh, uh, currently we are using these technologies for the conservation of the quail species of Pakistan, like common quail, Japanese quail, uh, and then uh, rain quail. And these techniques, they also have been successfully used in many amphibian species. And uh, amphibians, of course, they, you know that uh, they, they use the unique reproductive pattern mechanism. So they are, uh, they are, uh, they have an, uh, although they have a uh, maximum usage as an laboratory animals, but uh, many uh, uh, endangered species of the amphibians, uh, they, uh, they are, uh, uh, being uh, protected through this uh, application of these reproductive biotechnologies. And these technologies, they include the uh, uh, collection of eggs and sperm, uh, and this process is highly uh, species specific. And then, uh, as I told you that uh, uh, currently, in Pakistan, uh, uh, only if technologies for the conservation of uh, uh, many species, uh, and we have used successfully these technologies uh, for Punjab Uriyal. This is a wild sheep. Then uh, my PhD was on the conservation of Indian red jungle fowl. Then many of my students, they have worked on uh, uh, ringneck pheasant, then uh, black astra loop. Uh, that is a backyard poultry, poultry. and then uh, uh, currently my uh, six or seven students, they are working for the conservation of the quail species, uh, like I told you earlier, uh, common quail, Japanese quail, and rain quail. And uh, another uh, project uh, that is running in my lab, that is the genetic diversity and population structure of the Markhor. And uh, we have used uh, techniques uh, up till now, 
uh, that is the semen cryopreservation, either in refrigerator, either in minus 80 freezer, or either through the liquid nitrogen. Then we also use the technique of uh, fast and slow cryopreservation. And uh, we also use the sperm uh, uh, separation techniques, like we can use the, uh, we can isolate X or Y carrying uh, sperm. And uh, we have done this technique successfully. Then we use uh, different anti-freezing agents, uh, we isolated uh, bacteria from the semen and then uh, uh, these, uh, uh, and we have developed many extenders for the cryopreservation of mammalian, uh, Punjab Udial, avian species. And uh, of course, uh, we use also use the technique of artificial insemination, not only in mammals, but also in uh, birds. And uh, uh, recently, uh, our lab is also working for the uh, for the germ plus conservation of the uh, fish species also. So it means that uh, we have a uh, very good uh, uh, scope for these techniques. Um, we need uh, for this purpose we need to have a continuous uh, uh, support from the funding agencies, uh, uh, from the stakeholders, and also uh, from many other areas. So um, that's all about uh, uh, up till now, you see that uh, uh, we have been using these technologies since 2007 for the conservation of mammalian, avian, and uh, fish species of Pakistan. So thank you so much. If you have any question, uh, you can ask, please. Thank you. Uh, the house is now open for question and answer session. If you have any question, you can ask the question, please. Sama? Assalamualaikum. Yeah. Waalaikum. Assalamualaikum, madam. Waalaikum assalam. Uh, I'm Tehreem Tahir. Mm -hmm. Uh, your PhD student, biotechnology. Mm. Um, I want to ask that uh, what is the difference between the in vitro fertilization of me, uh, animals and human? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, the difference is uh, uh, IVF involves the same procedure, both in animal and humans. Uh, both involve the collection of sperm from the male and uh, oocytes from the female. Uh, so, um, of course, the only difference is that uh, one is the human and the other is the um, animal, but the technique involves the same procedure, same procedure. Okay, thank you. So, any other question from audience, please? If there are no further questions, uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Bushra Alaraka for delivering a wonderful and informative lecture on the subject. Thank you so much, Dr. Bushra. Thank you. Hello. Uh, and I would also like to thank all the participants for sparing time for this uh, important seminar today. Uh, we will have our next seminar on next uh, Thursday at the same time at 2 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you. Allah.